So first, let's talk about the processor architecture. And the first thing in this architecture that I want to show you, and I'm kind of jumping the gun here a little bit. This is probably something I should show you three or four more slides in, but I, I want to talk to you about this right here, right now, because what we have here in this operation is we have something called a cycle. And this term cycle is very important. And understanding that a processor works in cycles is very important because part of what we are going to talk about uh, later on in this lesson is we'll talk about the speeds of processors. And that's probably the part that you care about the most, right? Uh, you want to know what processor to get. And when you're looking at the specs, you're looking at the speed of the processor. You want to know what that means, right? That's all related to cycles. Okay, the speed is how many cycles it has the ability to process each second. Okay, so we'll come back to that. Uh, but let's talk about this cycle here. Okay, this cycle starts off with, uh, first we have something called fetch. Okay, and the fetch part of the cycle is where the processor will fetch or get data. And to be specific, we're, we're, we're kind of pulling that data from something called the external data bus. That's why I said I'm jumping the gun a little bit. We haven't looked at the diagrams. These are real fun diagrams, by the way. Uh, looking at diagrams uh, to see what this external data bus is. Uh, but we'll just say that we already learned what a bus was with the motherboards lesson. Uh, so we're going to say that the external data bus is, is just that. It's where information travels in and out of the processor. Okay, so we go ahead and we fetch the data. And with that, we then figure out uh, in the decode part of the cycle here, what type of command needs to be executed. Okay, so there's a certain set of uh, built-in instruction sets or, or operational codes. Okay, these are commands that can be implemented by the processor. We have to figure out what type of command needs to be executed. And then, of course, once we figure out the type of command that needs to be executed, well, that takes us to the next step here, which is to actually execute the command, right? So we need to go ahead and execute the command, or what we could say is perform uh, the appropriate calculation, right? Because that's what's going on in the processor. We're processing all these calculations. And then we take those results, and we store, and even though it's called store, we store the results, but we don't necessarily store them in the processor itself, they, they get stored elsewhere. So we go ahead and send that data back out onto the external data bus. So we send it back to whatever device it is that we were communicating with. Okay, so that's a cycle. And, you know, when we talk about this particular cycle, and it sounds like, well, okay, that's, that's something, right? That, that's a significant something. Uh, I kind of like it because it's tangible. How many of those do you think we can do in a minute? Well, if we think of it from a human perspective, not a lot. But from a computer perspective, and when we talk about you know, the electronics of this, we're not even talking about how many we can do per minute. We're talking about how many we can do per second. And believe it or not, we can do millions of these per second. Okay, So a million of this process right here happens every second in a processor in a computer. Now, you may also remember that we talked about back in the motherboards lesson, uh, when I showed what the processor looked like on the motherboard, uh, we actually couldn't see the processor, right? Well, what we ended up seeing was we ended up seeing uh, uh, something I called a heat sink and a fan, right? We talked about for having to cool the processor. Well, the reason we have to cool it is because, well, think about it. If it's doing millions of these things per second, it's going to get quite hot, okay? But we'll come back to that later on in this lesson when we talk about the cooling aspect.